Have you ever seen somebody for the first time, wondered what mattered to them, wondered how they might view you, sat down, took one look at that person, and within five minutes told them your entire life story and then thought, what just happened? <laughs> that is the, that's the beauty of connection. That's the beauty of connection with another person. And connection pays off in the dividends of joy. Now, it's really weird that I'm speaking in the financial literacy part of today's conference because if you read my book, you'll see that as a young child, I wanted to have all kinds of fun. And my mom said, well, when you're an adult, you can make up your own rules. And so I did. And one of those rules was I do not have to do math on weekends. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> but those stories, right, those moments of connection, that richness, I'm in this section because joy makes us feel very rich. And connection is such a powerful source of joy. Those moments, those stories, they matter. And I, I don't know about you, but I love being on the other end. You know, asking a good question and then getting that life story. I love those moments, especially with people who are very different than I am, which is basically everybody who's breathing. And one day I was heading to speak to a, a group of women and I got on the airplane and I like to get dressed up when I travel because you never know who you're going to meet. And so I put on this beautiful purple dress and I had a purple water bottle and I had a purple carry on and I'm coming down the middle of the airplane, you know, my favorite color. And, and I saw the gentleman that was in my row and I thought, okay, we could not be more different. The only thing that I could see initially that we had in common was the color of his hair, which was purple. <laughs> it was like a mohawk, you know, right down the middle. And he had uh, piercings on lots of his face and tattoos all over every part of skin I could see. And black clothing, big black combat boots, you know, those real bulky ones. And he had chains hanging off of his belt. And he was different, and I was curious. <laughs> I wanted that story. And he took one look at me and all my purple and just looked out the window. <laughs> and I had to respect that. You know, I'm not going to be that annoying person on the plane that just beats you up with conversation when you want silence. But I, so I thought, well, I'll just, I'll read my book. And so I was, I was tr traveling to speak about this book, which I wrote. It's called Messy Joy. And strangely, I read it while I travel. I don't know about other authors, but I like to learn about my audience before I go and then read my book while I'm on the trip from what could be their perspective. I pray for them. I imagine what their lives are like. And, and I'm just hoping that it's relevant as we talked about relevance and, and things that resonate. And so that's what I was doing. I thought, well, if he doesn't want to talk to me, I'll read my book. And then the cookies came down the middle of the airplane, you know, they're passing out the cookies. And I thought, here we go. I'll have a chance to talk to this guy. So I passed his cookies over to him and I saw the scariest ring I have ever seen in my life. It was a hulk of metal on his ring finger and it was black and silver and it was sort of like this gnarly, twisted skeleton. And I thought, well, I have two choices. I could ask about that ring or ask for a parachute. And so I took a chance and I said, wow, that's quite a ring. Could you tell me the story behind that ring? And this guy with all the purple and the chains looked at me like I had two heads. And he gushed his whole life story. And I got his story. And I found out that his name is Joey. And he loves heavy metal music. Do we have any heavy metal fans? Okay, I'm not one, but he loves this band called Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. And that ring is in the symbol that is on a bunch of their t-shirts and album covers. And he loves Iron Maiden so much, this guy travels from the States around the world to catch Iron Maiden concerts. And he went all the way to Germany to have that ring commissioned. And he worked, uh, I don't remember what he did. It was something with IT and he traveled all the time. And so every time he traveled, he was trying to catch a show and this was his life. 
until he became a father. And he decided, okay, that part of life, you know, is in the past. I'm, I'm going to be a dad. And so he poured all of his energy into his family, got a job living in the town, didn't travel all the time, gave up the music. And then life changed again. And his wife filed for divorce, took the baby, who was two at that time, and moved away. And so this gentleman, Joey, drove to see his son every single weekend, eight hours each way, for eight years. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy who had his walls up because he has been judged by so many people should be judged as a really wonderful, loving, devoted father. We can quickly assume all kinds of things when we see people. But when we allow connection to take place, we ask a question that opens up the floodgates, we learn how much we have in common. I have a t-shirt. I should have worn it. It says, ask me how we are alike. And I've had the best conversations whenever I wear that thing. We need to know how we're alike. We need to connect. And so I'm, I'm just amazed. This guy had such a great story. And I thanked him and I said, you know, I'm, I'm the child of divorce and my father moved 12 hours away and I love him dearly, but thank you for being the kind of father who would do that for your son. I'm wondering though, how do you stay connected to your son during the week? You must really miss him. And he said, yeah, you know, when he got a little older, we started playing computer games together. We would get online at the exact same time. And we would talk and we would laugh and we would play games. And our favorite game is called Dungeons and Dragons. We love Dungeons and Dragons. He said, in fact, we love that game so much. I started to write stories about Dungeons and Dragons. And I would email those to my son. And I would expand on what we had done in, in our game. And my son loved those stories. And so he would write a little bit and he'd send it back to me and back and forth, this thing goes. And I watched him as he told me that part of the story. And I noticed earlier while I was reading my book when he didn't want to talk to me, I saw him looking at the book and my face is on the book. I mean, he could tell. And I said, you know, I cannot help but say as I saw you talking about writing, something changed. Your whole face changed when you talked about those stories. That really does something for you, doesn't it? And he thought about it and he goes, you know, I never really thought about that before. You're right. I said, well, you know what that is? That's joy. I, I hawk joy for a living. I help people have joy. I know it when I see it. That's joy. You should write all the time. That's good for you. And he said, I said, you know what? People probably would love to read your book. If you put those stories into a book, people who love that game would probably love that book. And you know what he did? He looked at me and he said, people like me don't write books. And we spent the rest of that trip unpacking people like me. What in the heck is that? And by the time we landed, we had a plan where he would write that book in a year's time, and he would move to the city where his son lived. And I got off that plane, and a year later I flew across the ocean to tell you this story that never would have happened had the first question been something surface level, something we're conditioned to ask, like, how are you? <laughs> nice weather we're having here, isn't it? People deserve more than how are you. There are Joeys everywhere. There are people who are just dying to connect. In fact, we're dying because we're not connecting. If you haven't heard, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you, there is an epidemic. It's the loneliness epidemic. And the National Institutes of Health has determined that loneliness affects us at the cellular level. And it causes things or contributes to other things like heart disease. We talked about that today. It contributes to high blood pressure. People have higher rate of stroke. They obviously have emotional dis disturbances, right? That all kinds of mental health issues are tied to loneliness. Even progression of Alzheimer's is tied to loneliness. We are dying to connect 
There is richness in human connection. So I just want to implore you to get out of your comfort zone. Open your eyes and see the Joeys in your path. They could be people that you work with. They could be people that supervise you. They could be people that you serve. They could be strangers. There could be Joeys living under your roof. Think about ways to get the walls down, get your ego, and kick it to the curb. Don't worry what they think of your question. If they don't want to answer, they won't, right? You're not offending anybody by asking a good question. We are so worried about what people will think. We don't want to offend anybody. God forbid we would actually talk to another human being, but what happens when we do? So let that go. Let the fear go, the fear of judgment, anything that is holding you back. Be respectful, obviously. If someone doesn't want to talk, <laughs> one time I was on a subway in New York City. Oh, I was dying to hear this guy's story. He had his headphones on. He had his hood up, and he was looking away on the subway, and his tattoo said, Dear God, please save me from my friends. Oh, I still don't know his story. That was probably 15 years ago, and I'm still praying for the guy, right? There are people that don't want to talk. But when the walls do come down, be ready. Be ready to listen with compassion. Drop everything and listen. Really hear what they're saying. Go deeper when it seems safe to do so. Don't be afraid. You never know whose life might change in that very minute because some woman in purple on an airplane gave a dang and asked about your story, right? You could be, you could be that woman. Now, that sounds really weird. Um, before you go today, I want to implore you to be sure to develop that skill. Ask the right questions and encourage other people to ask the right questions. My hope is Joey is out there asking people something to get them to talk. The thing that I love about joy, the fact of the matter is joy is contagious. I am a joy coach and an international keynote speaker on how to have joy when life is difficult because I know people don't keep it to themselves, right? They share it and we need that. I have a business that, this is kind of funny, the business is called Joy to the World Coaching and I cannot reach the world, but I can reach somebody and that person can then share that with somebody. And that's how we get this around the world. So the good, the questions, back to that before I wrap up. How to ask a good question. In that instance, asking about that ring, I mean, come on. How could I look at that and not ask? So, so sometimes it could be a question like that. But I want you to keep one of these, and I'll pass these out. I want you to keep this in your back pocket. Take a photo of it with your phone. Keep it in your purse because it has some of my favorite conversation starter questions, things that I've used in the grocery store or wherever unsuspecting people are that have really opened up the, the floodgates. And so some of my favorites are, what's the nicest thing anyone has ever said about you? Oh, the stories. I could, I could go on for days about what the answers have been. What made you laugh until you were short of breath? <laughs> You want to hear a good story? So that's it's. there are a few, I think six. So be sure that you take one of these. I would love for you to share the message of the fact that the loneliness epidemic ends when we connect one person at a time, when we experience the richness of human connection, when we allow it to pay off in dividends of joy. We don't keep that to ourselves. We do share that with the world. And I brought um, I brought a gift for you. You do not have to accept this gift. But if you would like, I would love to gift you with a copy of the book, Messy Joy. So come and say hi. Oh, yay, free things. <laughs> so please enjoy it. This is basically how to have joy when life sucks. So that's the, that's the essence of the book. Uh, take it if you will read it. I would love for you to read it. Uh, take it if you don't want to read it, but know someone who will. Just get the message out. Get the message out, if you'll help me. Let's spread that joy around the world. I need your help. Thank you. My name's Robin Shear, by the way. Thank you. <laughs>